Yo, what's up friends? Today we are back on Pokemon Showdown for another part of our Mega Laddering series where I'm basically taking a different Mega and uh, laddering with it, building a team, and just laddering with it every day. So today we're going to be using Megalopony. Megalopony is, is pretty cool. Not even going to lie, this thing got a buff in speed and attack, uh, which is the only ones I remember off the top of my head. I don't know if it got anything else. It probably did or didn't. I don't know. But that's the ones that matter as uh, it also became part fighting type. So now it's fighting in normal with fighting stab because it has access to high jump kick and the ability scrappy which means that it can hit ghost types with its fighting and its normal stab so this thing has high jump kick which is pretty cool uh, it's an insanely powerful attack and it actually lets it oko uh, sableye just because of a uh, scrappy so let's look at the team real quick now first off we got megalopony i decided on jolly max speed max attack just wants to be as fast as possible uh using fake out return plus high jump kick fake out ensures that i always get off my mega evolution and it's that nice priority attack whenever i come in just to get off a bit of chip damage especially uh with in conjunction with toxic which i'm actually running as my last move toxic wears down physically defensive walls such as lanner's t such as slow bro uh, anything that can come in on this Lopany and with Toxic plus Fake Out, you know, in the following turn that I come back in, just racking up the damage uh, easily for me and uh, I can, you know, dent teams with this Pokemon. So next up, I kind of wanted a lure for uh, Lopany, that way Lopany could do some work. So I decided on uh, Lure Victini, e -belt Victini. And uh, basically what this Victini has decided to do, or designed to do rather, sorry, uh, is get rid of physically defensive walls that check Lopany. So it's uh, two KOs a Hapalda on physically or especially defensive with V-Create plus Grass Knot or Grass Knot plus Recreate. It really just depends on the Hapalda on. Um, it can get rid of Lander's T with Glaciate. Uh, the EV spread is so that after Stealth Rocks, it has a really nice chance of getting rid of uh, max HP Lander's T. And Bolt Strike, of course, is just nice. It's just a nice move in general to hit Heat Ran, to hit Slowbro, to hit Suicune. Uh, with the extra belt, these attacks are all boosted. So, next up, I was looking really weak to Keldeo, so I decided on Latias. Latias, just a standard uh, Defogger, one of my favorite Pokemon in OU. Draco, Psyshock, Roost, and Defog. Uh, Roost, of course, for longevity as a Defog support. Um, provides the support that I need to get rid of Stealth Rock for Victini or uh, Spikes for Lopany, etc., etc. I decided on this spread, as I said last time, was because uh, it allows me to survive two spec secret swords after uh, after rocks from Caldeo. And this is my initial Caldeo switching, as well as my initial Landorus uh, eye switching. So next up on the list is a Pokemon that I kind of really didn't want to use. Uh, that's Rotom Wash. Now, don't get me wrong. Rotom Wash is an amazing Pokemon. It's about to quote Gator here. It's so versatile with the Volt Switch, with the Hydro Pump, with the will o -Wisp, with the Pain Split. You don't know what set it could be running. It could be running Trick. It could be running Choice Specs. Hit you with a Hydro Pump in the rain. But uh, yeah, back to me. Um, <laughs> basically, I needed something for Lanner's T, especially because I was running Victini, uh, Latias, and Lopany. All that Scarf or regular Lanner's T can um, switch into, well, quote unquote. It's just something I can't switch my own Pokemon into. So Rotom Watch definitely fit the role it also takes on Azumarill which is something that was a bit threatening and uh, some forms of Scizor which can also be a threat if I let Victini get weakened so Rotomash is just there uh, it helps me out versus Sand teams as well now next up on the list <laughs> I know you've been looking at it this whole time and you're like Joey I hate you why are you why are you a sinner right now why are you using Blissey now okay don't get me wrong I'm not a big fan of Blissey definitely not I think so many Pokemon can set up on it and uh, it's just a fat Pokemon in general that pisses me off so I decided though I need a switching for there's so many threats around like Greninja for example Greninja has a gunk shot so I can't put Azumarill here Azumarill is O-code um, Mega Sceptile is a threat especially the special set is a monster and it kind of wrecks my team right now uh, bar Victini but Victini I can't I'm not always going to be able to ensure that the thing is at full HP so I decided on Blissey it's awesome my switching to Gengar which is why I'm running Shadow Ball right here allowing me to do a decent amount to it and just ensure that Gengar cannot use me as setup fodder get up a sub get up a pain split taunt me etc I don't care if it taunts me as long as I whittle it with Shadow Ball softball for recovery seismic toss of course my main attack uh, as I'm going consistent damage with it and last but not least we have healing wish a bit of a gimmick but i wanted that support for lopany for victini that way i can play them a bit aggressively let them get weakened let them get lowered and then later on i can just healing wish them back up when blissey is taking care of pokemon like greninja pokemon like uh Sceptile. when they're gone might as well healing wish back up the threat so last but not least we got uh mammal swine now mammal swine is my check to mega salamence it's my stealth rocker it's my ground type that way pokemon can't just spam bolt switch 
uh, looking at like Mega Manetric. Mega Manetric could be annoying, though I do have Latias and Blissey. But this is just so people can't spam the Volturn combination. Um, I decided on Ice Shard, Earthquake, obviously, my main stabs, Adamant Nature, and uh, Stealth Rock, of course, because I needed the Stealth Rock. I didn't want to put that move on Blissey because I wanted Shadow Ball. And the Toxic is my last move, of course, helping uh, Lopany. Uh, Madame Swan is another Pokemon that baits in physically defensive walls, so Tox is just always nice. Unless it's Mega Snowbro and it's Cro like it's like Crow Bro, then oh my god, just go to Ubers already. I don't know. But uh, yeah, that's basically the team, so I'm gonna pause it until we find a battle. We'll be right back. Okay, so we have found a battle versus a very offensive team. Just gonna lead off a Lopany because I can fake out what I'm expecting to be a Mammal Swan lead or Landris. Um it's a it's a really aggressive team right here. There's a little bit of lag though going on on showdown so he doesn't bleed off a mammal swine i can go for fake out and uh pop his potential focus sash or i can potentially just get the uh, lander's t on the switch and um bikini can potentially put in a lot of work on this game because uh it forces in it forces in like a zoom row it forces in salamence so that's a uh, scarf lander's t as you can tell by the uh, damages now what i can do is um i know i could take one earthquake to be honest i can just take this earthquake and go for a return uh, if he wants to go for U-turn, that's not going to do crap to me because I am fighting type, or part fighting rather, as he doesn't go into U-turn. And I do get to get off a minus, uh, it's a minus one return, but it's still going to be a return. So if he wants to go out to like Heat Ran, for example, if that thing's like on a balloon, or, uh, which doesn't really matter, but uh, either way, I get off the uh, the return as he doesn't go out to Heat Ran. And it seems to be a defensive variant, that way uh, the Azumaro Heat Ran core checking the Lottie Twins, but... I'm actually going to go directly into my Mammoth Swine, uh, even though it does check his team a lot. Uh, I'm expecting Stealth Rocks right here, or even Toxic, because I do have a Rotom Wash. So I don't mind Mammoth Swine getting whittled because I do have the, uh, I do indeed have the Thick Fat, as he actually ends up pulling a double into his Lanner's T. And I'm just going to go right for a safe Ice Shard. I don't care that I, he's minus one, or I'm minus one rather. Uh, we don't mess around with those threats right there. So he goes out to his Zoom Roll. As I do have my Rotom Wash as a very, very uh, safe switching. If he wants to go for knockoff, that's fine. I can just pain split based on his team. So that's the plan right there. As uh, he's, he, got, he got me with the double right there, but he doesn't go for knockoff, which means that he's an Assault Vest variant. And uh, I will be able to go for Volt Switch right here. I'm not expecting him to stay in because I could definitely go for Will-O-Wisp. I can 100% go for Will-O-Wisp. So I'm expecting him to actually go out to his Heat Ran as uh, his initial switching to this thing. Now normally I wouldn't pay, play like this versus Azumarill. I probably would burn it because I can definitely play around the fact that he could switch out on Heatran. Like later on I could play around it, like after this turn. But I think I'm um, going for Volt Switch is my best play. And worst case scenario, he goes for play rough as he stays in and I have my Victini as my pseudo switching. So he ends up going out into his uh, it's Thunderous right here, and that gives me a free switch into Mammoth Swine. And again, I uh, don't really want to mess around with this threat. Um, see no life. I see no leftovers, so I'm assuming he's a Life Orb variant. I'm expecting him to actually uh, have Focus Blast. So not messing around with that threat, going right for the Ice Shard. Once I get up Rocks, uh, his team is going to be way easily dealt with. So, hmm. He's going for Play Rough right now, so I do have my Rotom Wash. I can come in and take that. Tank. As I can just go for Pain Split right now. As he ends up going for Play Rough again, that doesn't really matter much because uh, I don't need Rotom Wash for much this game. Uh, I'm just going to hit him with one more Pain Split. I'm expecting him to want to switch out into his uh, Thunderous right here. To be honest though, I could just go for Vault Switch or Willow or even. Hmm. No, I'm going for Pain Split because I want that extra recovery as uh, so he doesn't go out into Thunderous. And uh, I do have my Blissey, which can actually just come in and eat something up. <laughs> I am inside. I am inside. Uh, Blissey can come in. He can eat up a Focus Blast, even a Life Orb one. And I'm just going to pause it until he picks a move. So Blissey ends up getting paralyzed. It eats up that Life Orb Thunderbolt. I'm actually going to go for Soft Flow just in case he has Sewer Power or something along those lines as uh, he ends up going on to Heat Ran. And that's completely fine by me because that does give me a free switch into my Mammal Swine, which I can finally just set up my Stealth Rocks as he ends up going for his Stealth Rocks. So I don't mind these Stealth Rocks too, too much. Um, he can either protect right here or he can go directly into his... Uh, I was about to say, Boruto <laughs> What was that, the Japanese name of uh, Thunders, I believe? Something like that. 
but I'm expect I'm not expecting them to want to stay in because I can definitely just go for Earthquake right here. So I'm gonna go for my Stealth Rocks, which will ensure a bunch of kills as he ends up going out to his Thunderous. And again, the safest play right now is just going right for Ice Shard. No reason to predict his Azumarill if he wants to try and do that, as I am able to pick off the Thunderous. So that's one less threat uh, gone. No, he ends up going out into his Azumarill. I'm actually gonna predict him to predict my uh, Rotom Wash, so I'm gonna go for Earthquake. Now, while this is a risky play and this Pokemon completely beats his team, <laughs> my instinct is telling me to go for this, so I really want to. <laughs> I really do. Like, ah. <laughs> Alright, so I follow my... That's the type of thing, like, how I play. Uh, I follow my instincts, and it's really hard to fight them sometimes when the safer play will win me the game. But he was making so many aggressive doubles that I felt like that was an okay play to make. Uh, granted, you could have just knocked me out, but yeah. So, ends up going out to Mammal Swine. As uh, I do not want to stay in, I do not also have a switch. Though, in my opinion, uh, Blissey is kind of useless, so. But I do have my Rotom Wash. Uh, Rotom Wash, though, of course, does check that, so. I'm actually just going to go out into my uh, Rotom Wash, just because I, I do have Ice Shard to check the, uh, the Salamence if he wants to go out to that. As he ends up going out into... We're going for Earthquake, rather, and I can just go for Pain Split, as he has Freeze Dry, pretty nice. Not even gonna lie, that's pretty nice. Um, I do, of course, have this monster, which just comes in now, and uh, I don't think Return does enough. I'm gonna go for Freak Out, just to get off, you know, the, the residual damage on the uh, incoming Landorus. I probably could just go for Return if I really wanted to, but Fake Out is just... The constant hit it makes it it makes me be able to knock out the mammal swine with high jump kick after anyway even though it's more likely he'll go out to his uh his landers now one of the reasons i didn't want to go out into my victini just yet is because he does have heat ran still so it's like i didn't really want to go for uh v creator um glacier predicting landers either one but i tank that ice shard as i am going to be able to knock him out with the return and um mammal swine looking like it's going to be a monster in this game next time he goes out into uh, heat ran. I do have my Blissey, which can just healing wish up my mammal sign, which is why I have Blissey on this team, and I will be in a good position. So I'm gonna pause it to pick some on. It's definitely gonna be either uh, Salamence or uh, Landorus T, but I'm gonna pause it. Okay, so he ends up going out into his Landorus. Um, I'm just gonna fodder off my Latias because Latias doesn't really do much this game. If he goes for U-turn, good play on his part. You know, the Whittle, but uh, I can just go out to Latias and. Uh, the good thing is that it baits in his heat ram, which means I get off a healing wish with my Blissey. And uh, keeping Latias alive, um, it was my best possible play because it stops him from going for Earthquake with his Landorus. So I'm going to go out to my Blissey as he goes for Roar. Don't do that. As he roars me out into Victini, and uh, I really don't want you to do that. Like, I want to get the, I want to get off this, uh, I want to get off this um, healing wish. So he goes for Roar again as uh, Lopini ends up coming out. And I'm expecting to protect, so I'm going to go out to my Blissey. I just want a Healing Wish back up my, my uh, Mammal Swine so I can win the game. Just let me do that. But he ends up going for Lava Plume, which is even better for me because uh, he didn't end up going for Roar or anything. And I can just go right for Healing Wish. And it's time. Imagine this thing just sacrificing itself. <laughs> but I am able to go right for the Healing Wish. He's probably like, what? As uh, Mammal Swine comes back in. And part of the reason I wanted to go for Healing Wish is now that I have like eight turns to fire off different attacks. I don't even have to predict. And the fact that Stealth Rocks are up are going to help. So I am adamant I have a Life Orb. Even though he does have these uh, these Intimidate users, he does have dual Intimidate users. I can just go right for the Ice Shard. Uh, to be honest, my my gut's telling me right here to go for Earthquake because obviously uh, Heat Rain has to be a switch and he has to try and pivot. But there's no reason to do that. I'm, I'm just, I'm going to go against it. No. <laughs> because, uh, Basically, Mammal Swine just cleans up his team. So even if he does want to go out to Heat Run and pivot around, uh, the fact that I do have Stealth Rock up are just hindering him so much as he doesn't go out to Heat Run. Completely fine. Uh, like I said, he can't. There's no possible way he could play around me for eight more turns. I mean, it is possible. Shout out to my boy Problems in SBL. But uh, <laughs> I'm referring to uh, an Uber's battle between Problems and Blimlax well, when Blim actually outplayed uh, Prob in uh, like 50 different turns so uh, eight different turns I don't, i'm exaggerating but ends up going out to landers and like i said these stealth rocks are in my favor so 
I, uh, I don't really have to predict anything right here. As he can go back out into Atlantis if he wants to. But I'm going right for the safe Earthquake. As I am able to knock him out. And uh, at this point, I can then just go out to my Lopini. As he actually ends up going out into his uh, Lantern's T. So what I'm actually going to do is just sack my... Um, I'm going to sack my Latias because uh, Latias outspeeds Salamence if he, if he does end up going for Earthquake for some reason. But he ends up going for Knockoff. As at this point, uh, Ice Shard just wins the game. Um, Mammal Swine can pick off this. He can pick off that. And uh, it's going to be a good game. So Mammal Swine putting in all the work this game. He did uh, make some nice doubles early game, which let me you know stay in, I guess you could say. But uh, he goes out to Mount um, Salamence, even though it did get that defense boost, and I am minus one due to Intimidate, I don't think it can live this Ice Shard, because I'm an adamant life orb Ice Shard and Mammal Swine. So, yeah, good game, dude. And I'm going to pause it until we find another battle. We'll be right back. Alright, so we have found a game. This is why I have Toxic on my Mammal Swine, because this fat Pokemon, thankfully it's paired with this not-so-fat Pokemon, because uh, we can take that on. Actually, Rotom is um, Lopini is a threat, but I do have Rotom which can take it on. He also does have a potential healing wish user, so I'm actually just going to lead off with my uh, my Lopini as he ends up leading off with his <laughs> Playboy. And just going to Mega Evolve and go for the Fake Out. I don't know if he wants to risk a Speed Tide just yet, but I end up Mega Evolving first and getting off my Fake Out, so I wonder how real we are right now. I wonder how real we are. No way he's risking. I'm going for Toxic. Yeah, as he ends up going out to Slowbro. Okay, I was kind of scared about that play, but I am able to catch the Slowbro on the switching, which is amazing, as uh, Rotom Wash is a really safe switching at this point. Um, catching that Slowbro is going to whittle it turn per turn uh, down, uh, wear it down, and um, it's just going to help a lot. So he uh, ends up pulling a double out into Lopini, which is fine because uh, I can just, you know, this works out for me. I almost went out into my Blissey right there, so good thing I didn't. As, um, what I actually am going to do is just go right for the, the Volt Switch, expecting them to want to switch out. I want to get my, uh, my Victini in versus something that it's a threat to, so. I can go out into my Lopini now, go for Fake Out plus, uh, I can go for Fake Out plus the, um, a Jump Kick, so I'm just going to go for that Fake Out. He might actually just go out into Ferrothorn just to get Iron Barb's damage on me. Am I real enough to actually go for a Jump Kick? <laughs> nah, I'm not, I'm not real enough. As he does end up making that play. What a play. Um, I do... <laughs> I do have my Victini, though, just in case he wants to protect. Even though he's more than likely going to double out into Slowbro, Victini is a rather safe play anyway, as it takes on his team. So, go out to Victini. Uh, if he reveals protect, that's completely fine, as he actually ends up pulling a double out into the Slowbro. And... Uh, reveal the Grass Knot. I can tank... A, I can tank... Um, I can take any attack from him, basically, so going for Grass Knot, as uh, it does a decent amount to him as he ends up going for Toxic, and uh, what I can do is actually go for the um, Glaciate, predicting him to want to go out into his Latias, and that's definitely going to help me right there, so he does go out to Latias as I am able to smack that with a Glaciate, that doesn't do anything, but it does lower its speed, so that's going to help me deal with it, uh, definitely, as... Um, Oh, that's a threat. I'm just going to go out to Blissey. That's really a threat. This is a harder game for me because while I do know I, I can win, it's just going to be hard in general uh, just to win. So uh, I kind of want to go for V-Create. But he can't just drop a Drake. I really want to go for V-Create. I want to predict his double right here. But then again, his best play is actually just staying in and going for Draco. While I do have Blissey. I'm going for V-Create. Whatever. Do it for the guild. Ah uh, man, no, he's not gonna double. He's not gonna double. Go with my gut. No, my gut says go for recreate. But he's not gonna double. No, my brain. <laughs> Whatever, I'm going for recreate. As uh, he might think I have, I don't know what he thinks I have, but I'm gonna go for recreate. Even if I don't end up knocking, him. I, I know I'm not gonna knock him out, and I'm positive he's gonna stay in. But I got off some nice damage on this thing. As uh, he is gonna go for a Draco, just dropping a Draco. That's completely fine by me. As I do have my uh, my Mammal Swine now, which I can just set up rocks with, which is what I want. Uh, his Defogger, of course, gone. Uh, he can still drop a Draco, but I really don't need Mammal Swine this game, other than getting up my uh, Stealth Rocks. So 
I'm gonna be able to go to my male swine and just go for stealth rocks. Um, it's gonna be wearing down his uh, slow bro. It's gonna be wearing down the town flame as uh, he ends up going for Draco once again. Uh, you know, good play. Probably expecting me to go for not. I don't know what he was expecting me, but that was probably his best play. But I'm able to knock him out while getting up my uh, stealth rocks as well, which is complete, which is huge. It's definitely huge for me as he ends up going out to Lopany. And uh, while he can go for fake out, I can just go for ice shard and get off some damage on him. So I'm definitely going to go for this ice shard as it does put him in range of uh, that puts him in range of fake out from my Lopany. So I end up getting off this ice shard as he is able to go for return and uh, what I can do is just go out into my Rotom Wash and actually just fire off a Will-O-Wisp at this point. If he wants to go out to Ferrothorn that's completely fine. He actually ends up staying in and going for high jump kick. Uh, probably just trying to wear me down. That way um, Talonflame can do work but I do have um, I do have Hailing Wish on my Blissey so I'm not too too worried about Talonflame. And Blissey gets a free switch in versus uh, Blissey gets a free switch in versus Slowbro as well as Ferrothorn. So Ferrothorn, of course, being a threat, definitely a threat. But I'm keeping my rocks up on the field because they're going to be wearing down his team as uh, Lopany finally goes down. So that's definitely a uh, nice. I'm actually going to switch directly into my Rotom Wash. I don't know if he has Power Whip. Yeah, he might actually have Power Whip. It's kind of scary if he has Power Whip. Hmm. I don't want to go directly in Blissey just yet because he'll be taking like a crap load of recovery but we'll go out to my Rotom Wash as uh hmm yeah Rotom Wash they generally don't run Power Whip though I could see him definitely running that just because this is his main check to Rotom though he does have Latias as well and he does have Talonflame so I guess Power Whip is definitely his, he could have that but I'm gonna pause it or not as uh he ends up going for Stealth Rocks and uh what I can attempt to do is go for Will-O-Wisp right here hopefully I land it a landing a Will-O-Wisp on this Feral Thorn will uh, help me in my conquest <laughs> I guess you could say but I end up landing it on the uh, Mang zone uh, I'm expecting this to be scarf zone but then you know, I'm, I, I'm not gonna risk staying in right now so I'm just gonna go out into my uh, Blissey as I'll be able to freely fire off a seismic toss as he ends up going for bolt switch and um, I guess he has a free switch into anything really uh, slow bro being annoying uh, but he ends up going to Ferrothorn do we see leftovers on this thing? Yes, we do. And what I'm actually just going to do is just go for side of the toss. Uh, because I don't want to go directly into my Rotom just yet. So, I'm going to go for size and toss. As he ends up going for Power Whip. Yeah, that's a good thing I didn't go out to my Rotom. And uh, what I can do is just go out um, for the Healing Wish now. Bringing back my Rotom at full. As I can uh, basically recover for free and get the free switch into it. So that's exactly what I want. As he ends up going for Leech Seed. <laughs> Everybody who sees this is probably like, what the hell? And uh, Rotom being inside is definitely nice. So I'll be able to go for hmm, a Volt Switch right here, I believe. I'm going to predict his Magna Zone will want to come in. As uh, he does end up bringing that out. And uh, I am what we were called inside. The Lopany is back. And the combination of these all take on Slowbro. Slowbro, of course, still could still be a threat just because of uh, just because of the fact that it does have Toxic. But I'm going right for High Jump Kick. Uh, if he wants to bring in Slowbro, that's completely fine. As uh, he does end up bringing in Slowbro, it's going to eat this up. But, ooh, that's not a eating it up. I, I don't know if I'd call that eating it up per se. Hmm. I might just go for Toxic right now. I'm going to go for a Double High Jump Kick. Oh, I tried to make a play right there as uh, it doesn't necessarily work out for me. I guess I get a crit, so it kind of works out for me. The thing is, though, uh, I, while I kind of need Lopany, I'd rather whittle this Slowbro down. So I'm just going to go for Return as he ends up hitting me with Toxic. And now he's at the point where uh, he'll go down to High Jump Kick, so I can definitely just go for that. I'll get a kill right here. Though he did, he was able to toxic my Lopany, which is very very annoying. But the good thing is I'll be able to get rid of something like Magna Zone or Talonflame as uh, he ends up going out to Zone. Hopefully I land this high jump kick as uh, I am able to knock it out, and that's one less switch into my Rotom. So that's definitely good. Though he does still have this Slowbro just running around that can just spam toxic. So goes out to Slowbro right now. I. I don't want to just go for high jump kick expecting a switch. Um, how much did return do last time? 
I never went. Oh, I did 33%. Uh, I'm gonna go for high jumping as he ends up switching back on the Feral Thorn. And uh, hopefully, I land it as I am able to catch the Feral Thorn on the switch. In, and that's gonna, I think that's gonna seal up the game. Uh, Megalopony putting in so much work in this second game. Uh, it's insane. Uh, but. <laughs> I can't believe it actually, no, I can believe that I will code Ferrothorn just because it's it's 371 attack and that's a 130 base power move. So, completely insane that I was able to knock that thing out as uh, now he definitely has those two. But the thing is, with Slowbro poisoned and uh, Talonflame being checked with rocks plus Rotom Wash, I don't know if uh, my opponent can pull through. So, goes out to Slowbro. Really no reason to save this Pokemon. Uh, it did so much work this game. Yo, you deserve a good rest, bro. <laughs> you deserve a good rest. But basically, uh, what I'm just going to do is uh, spam return. Uh, even though he's just going to go for slack off, I'm whittling him. So uh, I'm wearing him down with the uh, poison damage as poison is going to be able to take me out this turn. And uh, now I could just drop a Draco. Yeah, he's going to go down to Draco plus poison, even if he does go for... Yeah, he has nothing to take this hit so I'm just gonna go for Draco I probably could have just went for Volt Switch as well uh, just in case this is like SD Lychee Berry uh, which could hit my um, it could definitely hit my Rotom upon switching but ends up going for Slack Off again it could hit my Rotom basically that's like the only thing it could do so he goes for Slack Off and uh, I'm just gonna continuously drop Dracos because I'm, I'm wearing him down like and I'm also getting rid of my own myself at the same time, which is something that I want. So he's going to go down to the uh, that damage, and uh, his last is Talonflame. Even if it is SD, uh, the combination of Life Orb plus Poison Damage is going to be taking me out before. And I think it might just be Banded, but we'll see. I'm going to go for Draco. Uh, if he sets up an SD, Rotom still wins as he does end up going for SD. And uh, the thing about me going for Draco is he's forced to... He's going to be forced to either roost right here or go for Brave Bird. So, just going to sack my uh, Latios. Go for a Draco again. Uh, it's still doing a lot, obviously. I'm minus 6 right now. Look how much a minus 4 Draco did. 30 something percent. So, he's SD roost, which means he most likely can't touch my, um, my Rotom. And I think I am just going to go for Volt Switch. Though he can more than likely just roost. I am just going to go for Volt Switch. I'm not expecting him to roost. But even if he does, because he has to bank off my Hydro Pump missing. Actually, yeah, I'm going for Hydro Pump because he doesn't have a roosting. And uh, I don't miss, and that is going to be a good game. So, yeah, good game, Wonder Bread. Uh, let me tell him good game. We're now 14 16. That's pretty cool. Oh, 22 minutes. All right. So, I hope you guys all enjoyed. Uh, Mega Lopini put in so much work in that last game. Uh, Vic I think Victini put in work in the first game. I'm not sure. Or Mammoth Swine. No, Mammoth Swine. So, leave a like if you enjoyed. You know, go check out those t shirts if you want. And uh, until next time, later.